the ocean. It covers 71% of our planet and is home to a lot of really weird species of animals. Explorers have pondered for centuries what really lies down there, and throughout time, stories have arisen of beasts that are unheard of. From living plesiosaurs to sharks with tentacles, welcome to the aquatic cryptids iceberg. Also, I made this chart myself, so let me know if there's anything I could approve on for the future. Alright, let's get straight into it now with the first entry of tier 1, Ogopogo. The Ogopogo is a creature that's said to live in Canada's Okanagan Lake and is also known by its indigenous name Nahaatik, which translates to either water demon or water god. For a long time, stretching hundreds of years, the natives believed they could only cross the lake if they gave a live sacrifice for this creature, like a small animal. There was even a vet from oral recounts where a chief leader who denied the existence of Ogopogo ended up sucked to the bottom of the lake by the creature. Several sightings have been reported over the years from non-native people too though, originating back all the way to 1872. In the 1900s is when Ogopogo started gaining even more attention though, and a local tourism agency even offered cash out for someone who could prove the existence of this creature. In 2008, Sean Valoria did exactly that, who was out with the lake by his girlfriend and captured photographs of what appeared to be a mysterious object with black hump ridges. Apparently, his camera died though so he wasn't able to take much photos, and the only ones he did, he didn't want to publish. What he did publish though was another sighting when he returned 8 days later after to the lake and saw some disturbances in the water. The images were then analyzed by local experts and TV shows like Monster Quest, and ended up revealing no evidence of tampering. It still didn't really provide evidence though, but the fact that experts think it isn't hoaxed is pretty cool. With all this, international interest in the Ogopogo has surged, with documentary producers and TV shows globally seeking to explore this legend. Locals and tourists often come to the lake with their cameras, hoping to catch a glimpse of the Ogopogo. Champ Champ is a serpent-like creature with a humped back and a long neck, said to inhabit Lake Champlain. Native American folklore, particularly from the Abenaki and Iroquois tribes, contain early references to a large creature in the lake, known as Gitzkog. The legend gained traction among European settlers and over the years, there have been numerous sightings. One of the earliest reported sightings dates back to the 18th century, when French explorers were warned by the Apanuki about disturbing the lake's waters. Despite the warning, in 1819, Captain Crumb reported seeing a black monster about 107 feet long in the Bulwaga Bay. The creature had distinctive features like eyes the color of a peeled onion and a red belt around its neck. The year 1873 was particularly eventful too with multiple sightings, including one by Clinton County Sheriff Nathan H. Mooney, who described an enormous snake or water serpent. That year, showman P.T. Barnum even offered a reward for the creature's hide. The most famous sighting occurred in 1977 though, when Sandra Mansi captured a photograph of what appeared to be the champ. As she quoted, I saw it move. I saw it at different angles. You know if something is living or not. By 1992, there had been as many as 180 sightings, with about 600 individuals claiming to have seen champ. Researchers and scientists have conducted studies throughout the years, including underwater sonar surveys, but no concrete evidence for CHAMP has been found. Mokele Mbembe Mokele Mbembe is a creature said to inhabit the Congo River Basin in Central Africa. It's described as a dinosaur-like animal and has found its way in a lot of popular culture, from books to films. The legend, dating back centuries, is rooted in indigenous tribes' as folklore in Central Africa. Mokele Mbembe, which translates to one who stops the flow of rivers in Langala, is believed to dwell in deep, unexplored swamps and river systems of the Congo Basin, often hiding in caves along riverbanks. The creature is described as highly territorial and potentially herbivorous, feeding on vegetation. Earliest western accounts date back to 1776, with French missionaries noting enormous clawed footprints. In 1913, German captain Freiherr spoke of a creature feared by locals, described as brownish-gray, elephant-sized, with a long, flexible neck, small head, and a tail like an alligator, which does really sound like a dinosaur. Even cryptozoologists speculate Mokele and Mbembe might be a surviving dinosaur species, like Brachiosaurus or Diplodocus. Skeptics who argue against its existence cite the lack of concrete evidence despite numerous expeditions into the Congo. Carl Hagenbeck, a German big game hunter, was among the first Westerners to lead an expedition in search of it, describing it as half elephant, half dragon. After that, over 50 expeditions have been carried out, but none have provided indisputable evidence of its existence. Local tribes people have consistently claimed sightings though, so you can see how it's pretty complicated. The vast, unexplored Congo basin, covering about 1.5 million square miles, is considered a pretty plausible location though for such a species, if it does exist. Selkie 
Selkies are mythical creatures from Scottish, Irish, and Icelandic folklore and are known for their ability to transform from seals into humans. These shapeshifters have been featured in a lot of tales passed down, often mixed with themes of love, loss, and freedom. A common story in Selkie folklore is about a man who finds a Selkie woman in her human form, dancing on the beach. In these tales, the Selkie has shed her seal skin, which lies hidden nearby. The man, captivated by her beauty, steals the skin, thus preventing her from returning to the sea. The Selkie, who is now trapped in human form, is compelled to become the man's wife. These stories frequently involve the Selkie bearing children with their human husband. Despite living a seemingly normal life, the Selkie often remains deeply connected to the ocean, which is her true home. Her longing for the sea is a persistent theme in these tales, and in some stories, one of her children accidentally discovers the hidden seal skin and shows it to her. Upon finding the skin, the Selkie immediately returns to the sea, often leaving behind her children and husband, highlighting her true nature. This might seem like a normal tale, but the cultural significance of Selkies in Old Scottish and Irish folklore is pretty profound. They symbolize themes of transformation and the duality of nature, being neither entirely of the sea nor of land. Selkies are said to remind of the wildness of the ocean and the mystery of the creatures that inhabit it. They also represent the idea of being caught between two worlds, never fully belonging to either. Cadborosaurus Cadborosaurus, or Caddy, is a sea serpent rumored to inhabit the coastal waters around Cadboro Bay in British Columbia, Canada. The cryptid has intrigued people for over a century, with the first reports dating back to the late 1800s and early 1900s, primarily from sailors. One of the earliest accounts was from Captain C.J. House, who claimed to have seen a serpent-like creature with a horse-like head, raising its head about 30 feet above the water. The average length reported ranges from 30 to 60 feet. Over 300 sightings have been claimed in the past two centuries, including locations like Saanich Inlet and San Francisco Bay. One notable incident is the Kelly Nash video from 2009, where fishermen filmed several minutes of footage featuring multiple creatures in Nushinak Bay. There have also been several carcasses associated with Cadborosaurus. The most famous is the Naden Harbor carcass, found in the stomach of a sperm whale in 1937, featuring a 20-foot length and a serpent-like body with a fin tail. However, later analysis often attributed these carcasses to known animals such as basking sharks, beak whales, or even fetal baleen whales. Kappa So the kappa is probably one of my favorite here and is a really fascinating figure in Japanese folklore, known for its unique physical and behavioral characteristics. These mythical creatures are said to inhabit Japan's ponds, rivers, and lakes, and are often depicted with a humanoid appearance. They have webbed hands and feet, scaly green skin, and a distinctive bowl-like indention on their heads, which is filled with water and believed to be the source of their strength. Their behaviors range from harmless pranks to more serious acts like drowning people and animals, kidnapping children, and consuming human flesh. Despite these menacing aspects, kappas can also behave friendly towards humans. It's said that they're obsessed with politeness, and if a person bows down to a kappa, it will feel compelled to return the gesture. This action can cause the water in its head to spill, rendering the kappa powerless. Once the water is refilled, the kappa can regain its strength, and in some stories, it may even serve the person who helped it. This is kind of like a way to trick a kappa in some stories. A famous historical account from a Japanese heroic tale involves Tawara Toda, a skilled archer who ended up capturing a kappa. The creature, after being subdued, promised to teach Toda the secret of removing stones from horses' hooves in exchange for its life. An interesting thing I want to add though, in 2016, a group of people in the town of Kamitakatsu claimed to have seen a kappa in the river. The creature was described by them as having green skin, a beak-like mouth, and a shell on its back, aligning with traditional descriptions. In another instance, a self-proclaimed paranormal researcher named Masaki Miyagawa claimed to have captured a kappa in a river in Kyoto in 2002. He provided photos for the creature which he described as having webbed hands and feet and a turtle-like shell. Luska The Luska, a cryptid believed to inhabit the Caribbean waters, especially around the Bahamas, is described as a hybrid between a shark and an octopus, and is said to be 25 to 200 feet long. The sea monster is rooted in Caribbean folklore and is thought to dwell in underwater caves and blue holes, emerging suddenly to seize its prey with its large tentacles and powerful jaws. There have been various sightings and encounters with the Luska throughout time, with divers reporting unexplained disappearances and sightings of large, shadowy figures with tentacles, believed to be the Luska. In one instance, a fishing boat near Blue Hole disappeared without a trace, with local fishermen attributing its vanishing to the Luska. These reports often lack concrete evidence but continue to feel speculation and interest in this cryptid. 
Even an alleged corpse of the creature was found in the late 19th century, when a large carcass washed ashore near St. Augustine, Florida. The creature, described as having silvery pink hue and axe-proof skin, was initially thought to be a giant octopus by Professor Vero. Later, after examining tissue samples, the conclusion shifted to a sperm whale's head. This incident stirred debates among scientists and cryptozoologists alike about the existence of giant cephalopods and the possibility of creatures like the Luska actually being real. The Luska's legend has also been featured in films, documentaries, and even video games, often portrayed as a terror of the Caribbean. The creature's representation in the media reflects the enduring fascination and fear it inspires. Lake Van Monster The Lake Van Monster, known locally as Van Gulu Canavari, is a creature said to dwell in Lake Van, a large alkaline lake in eastern Turkey. The script has its origins traced back to ancient Armenian mythology, with the god Vahan, known as the Reaper of Bishops or Water Dragon, was said to dive into the Lake Van to extract any bishop that had grown large enough to devour the world. The first recorded sighting of the Lake Van monster dates back to 1889 though, when a local fisherman claimed to have seen a large, snake-like creature in the lake. Since then, there have been numerous reports and alleged sightings of the creature. In 1997, the legend gained even more attraction when a local man, Unel Kozak, claimed to have captured the monster in video. Some criticized Kozak's footage and its authenticity, suggesting it could have been a hoax. Despite the skepticism, the legend of the Lake Van monster has become an important part of the region's folklore and cultural identity, inspiring artwork, literature, and even tourist campaigns. Even a 4 meter high statue based on the reported settings has been built in the city of Van, Turkey. With all this traction and attention, the Turkish government sent an official scientific survey group to the lake, which failed to spot the creature. Bunyip The Bunyip a cryptid from Australian mythology traces back to the early days of European settlement in Australia. Originating from Aboriginal folklore, the name Bunyip roughly translates to demon or evil spirit. It was often correlated as a cautionary tale about the dangers of waterways. Descriptions of the Bunyip vary greatly, indicating a creature that is as mysterious as it is terrifying. Early settlers reported seeing a creature with dark fur, a face resembling a dog, sharp teeth and claws, and sometimes even equipped with flippers, tusks, or horns. Some accounts even described it as having a duck-like bill. These very descriptions have led to numerous theories about the Bunyip's true nature. One interesting aspect of the Bunyip legend is its possible connection to extinct Australian megafauna. Scholars have proposed that the Bunyip myths may stem from Aboriginal encounters with the remains of prehistoric creatures like Debrododon or Thylocolio, leading to their interpretation as Bunyips. This theory suggests that the Bunyip could be a cultural memory of animals that once roamed the Australian landscape. I actually touched on this aspect in a paleontology video and the rabbit hole is pretty interesting. Other theory proposed by Charles Fenner in 1933 suggests that seals that wandered inland might have been mistaken for bunyips. Their physical features including smooth fur and distinctive cries could have contributed to the sightings and legends. Nahuelito Nahuelito, a cryptid reported to dwell in Argentina's Nahuel Haupi Lake, traces its origins back to the early 20th century with the earliest reports emerging in the 1920s. Described often as a serpentine or plesiosaur-like creature, Nahuelito is said to possess a long neck, humped back, and considerable size. The narrative gained traction through press coverage and eyewitness accounts, which painted a vivid description of the mysterious lake inhabitant. The Buenos Aires Zoo, under the guidance of Clementine Onelli, a renowned figure in Argentina natural history, launched an investigation in 1922 to find evidence of this mysterious creature. However, despite these efforts, no concrete proof of Nahuelito's existence was uncovered. Over the years, the legend has been fueled by various theories, ranging from Nahuelito being a remnant of prehistoric times to a mutant resulting from nuclear experiments. One of the earliest sightings was reported by George Garrett in 1910. He described seeing a creature with a significant portion of its body protruding above the lake's surface. This account, along with similar stories from local communities, spurred further expeditions, including one led by Garrett himself in 1922. However, like the Buenos Aires Zoo efforts, these explorations yielded no verifiable evidence. The Argentine Navy's encounter in the 1960s, where they tracked an unidentified underwater object for several weeks, reignited interest in Nahuelito. Despite numerous reports and alleged photographic evidence, which have been often dismissed as hoaxes, Nahuelito's existence remains unconfirmed. Alta Mahaha the Alta Mahaha, also known as Alti, is a cryptid believed to inhabit the marshes and waters 
near the Altamaha River in Georgia. Among its numerous reported sightings, a few stand out for their intrigue and detail. One of the earliest documented encounters dates back to April 18, 1830. Captain Delano of the Schooner Eagle reports seeing a monstrous creature off St. Simon's Island, just below the mouth of the Altamaha River. He described it as being about 70 feet long, with a circumference similar to a barrel, and a head that resembled an alligator's. This sighting wasn't isolated. Five other crew members and several planters on Simon's Island also claimed to have seen this peculiar beast. This encounter was so notable that it was reported in the Savannah, Georgia newspaper, so it captured a bunch of public attention. Fast forward to 1969, two brothers fishing on the Altamaha River at Clark's Bluff reported an encounter with a creature they initially mistook for a sturgeon. Upon closer examination, they revised their assessment, describing it as approximately 10 to 12 feet long, with an alligator-like snout, a horizontal tail, and a distinct triangular ridge along its body. Its color was noted as gunmetal gray, adding to the creature's mysterious and intimidating appearance. The sighting was brief, but left a lasting impression on the brothers who were familiar with the local wildlife and certain that what they saw was unlike any known aquatic animal they had seen before. Ico Torso Ico Torso is a sea monster from Finnish mythology. Its exact appearance isn't well defined and is believed to dwell in the northern depths of the sea near the land of Pohajola. This creature's role extends beyond that of a simple sea monster. It's also regarded as a god of war and a harbinger of destruction. In the Finnish national epic, the Kelavala, Iko Torso is summoned by Luhi, the Lady of the North, to stop the theft of the magical artifact Sampo. However, the hero Vanyamonian captures Iko Torso and makes a promise to never return from the bottom of the sea. Iko Torso's malevolent nature is further added by its association with disease and death. It's sometimes referred to as the father of diseases in leagues with Loviatar, the blind daughter of Tuani, the god of death. In some Finnish folklore narratives, Iko Torso is credited as a progenitor of several afflictions unleashed upon humanity. The mythology of Iko Torso might have been inspired by real creatures such as the Wells catfish, a huge predatory fish that was once found in Finnish waters. The catfish, known for its large size and intimidating appearance, might have contributed to the legends of Iko Torso. The creature's association with the catfish is further suggested by its depiction as having a long, wet beard similar to the beard of a catfish. In contemporary Finnish culture, Iko Torso continues to be a popular figure. It's often featured in Finnish literature, art, and popular culture, appearing as a fearsome monster in movies, TV shows, and music. The Finnish metal band Turisas, named after the sea monster, incorporates themes from Finnish mythology in their music, keeping the spirit of Iko Torso alive in modern times. Jialong The Jialong, in Chinese mythology, is depicted as an aquatic dragon and is often associated with the rivery waters. It's known to take various forms, sometimes described as a man, other times as a fish, but consistently it embodies characteristics of a river dragon, spiritually similar to a crocodile. One particularly vivid description of the Jialong comes from an 11th century text called Moke Huixi, portraying it as a snake with a tiger head several phantoms long, living in brooks and rivers, and capable of producing a bellow similar to a bull. This Jialong was said to trap humans with a stinking saliva, then pull them into the water to suck their blood from their armpits. This description, considered the best definition of a Jayo by scholar Wolfram Eberhard, paints a pretty terrifying image of the creature. The Jialong scales are a notable feature, often referred to as scaly or scaled dragon in medieval texts. Its aquatic nature is also emphasized in various historical Chinese texts. The Jialong or Jayo is seen as the lord of aquatic beings, and legends say that if a number of fish in a pond reaches 3,600, a Jialong would come as their leader and enable them to fly away. Interestingly, the Jialong is also perceived to have gender characteristics, with some sources suggesting it as exclusively female, a dragoness. The myth suggests a female counterpart of the Jialong called the Jiao, which is hornless, unlike the horned Jialong. Also in Chinese culture, the Jialong has been used as a symbol of China's technological advancement, particularly with the naming of China's first deep sea man submersible after the mythical sea dragon. Lake Tianchi Monster the Lake Tianchi monster, often regarded as China and North Korea's counterpart to the Loch Ness monster, is a mysterious creature said to inhabit Heavenly Lake on the peak of Baikdu Mountain. This area spans the Baikdu Doigan and Changbai mountain ranges, crossing Jilin province in China and Raigang province in North Korea. The lore of the Lake Tianchi monster dates back to the early 20th century, with the first report setting in 1903, 
describing a large buffalo-like creature that attacked three people before retreating underwater after being shot. More recent accounts describe the monster with a human-like head, having a white ring around its neck and gray, smooth-like skin. In 2007, Chinese TV reporter Zhu Yongshen claimed to have filmed six identified creatures in the lake, describing them as seal-like and finned, swimming in coordination as if following commands. Sightings continued into the 21st century, with various reports emerging over the years. In July 2020, a worker at the Changbai Mountain National Park filmed a black round object on the lake surface, believing it to be the monster. However, these sightings are often met with skepticism. Scientists argue that the lake's volcanic activity makes it an unlikely habitat for the large creatures. Despite this, sightings of up to 20 mysterious creatures have been reported, keeping the legend alive. The Brosno Dragon The Brosno Dragon, also known as Brosnia, is a creature said to inhabit Lake Brosno in the Teva region of Russia. Described as resembling a dragon, the script has sparked fear and curiosity for centuries, with its stories dating back to as early as the 13th century. The Brosno Dragon is often compared to a plesiosaur or an aquatic reptile, measuring approximately 15 to 30 feet in length. It's characterized by dark, scaly, or slimy skin and is said to be elusive and aggressive. The habitat of this creature is a deep, cold lake with a murky bottom, located in a remote area of Russia. There are numerous legends and eyewitnesses accounts associated with the Brosno Dragon. One ancient story tells of Bati Khan's army, which was terrorized by the creature emerging from the lake, leading them to abandon their campaign against the Novogod Republic in Russia. Other legends include fishermen being devoured whole and claims that it swallowed a plane during World War II. Eyewitnesses often report seeing the creature surfacing in the evenings, moving in a serpentine manner through the water, but disappearing quickly when approached. In 2002, a significant investigation into the Brosno Dragon was conducted with the Cosmiok Research Association. They used sonar equipment to scan Lake Brosno and discovered a huge jelly-like substance near the lake's bottom, roughly the size of a railway car. After detonating a low-capacity underwater explosive device, the substance moved but was not identified as a living creature. Koro Kamui The Koro Kamui is a sea monster deeply rooted in Ainu folklore and Japanese mythology. It's often depicted as a colossal octopus or fish-like creature, with some accounts describing it as having a human-like face and long arms with suckers. The creature's size is said to be massive, with some legends claiming it can grow up to 120 meters in length. Akoto Kamui sightings have been reported for centuries, primarily in Ichiwara Bay near Hokkaido, Japan. There have also been numerous sightings off the coast of Korea and Taiwan. The creature is often described as red in color, and its appearance is said to make the sky and sea appear to have a reddish tinge, causing panic among seafarers and fishermen who believe it to be an omen of the monster's approach. One Ainu legend traces the origin of the creature to the transformation of a giant spider, Yashukep into an octopus by the sea god Repun Kamui. This transformation was a response to the spider's attack on a village, and as an octopus, the creature grew in size and became more ravenous, posing a threat to sea monsters and maritime traffic. In Shinto tradition, Akuro Kamui is revered as a deity of healing and spiritual knowledge, although it is also known for its harmful and capricious nature. The creature's ability to regenerate its limbs is seen as a symbol of its healing powers, one account, recorded by John Batchelor in the Ainu in the Folklore 1901, describes an incident where fishermen encountered a giant sea creature with enormous eyes. The monster attacked their boat and discharged a dark, odorless fluid, terrifying the fishermen. A general theme with eyewitnesses is usually like a description of giant octopuses capable of swallowing boats and feeding on whales and other sea creatures. Tier 3. Lake Ilamna Monster The Lake Ilamna Monster, also known as Ili, is a cryptid said to inhabit Alaska's largest freshwater lake, Lake Ilamnia. The lake, spanning roughly 1,000 square miles and reaching depths to nearly 1,000 feet, provides a pretty fitting habitat for such a creature. The first modern reports in Lake Ilamnia date back to the 1940s, but Native American legends about mysterious creatures in these waters go even further back. One of the earliest recorded sightings was by Bush pilot Babe Ellisworth and Bill Hammersley in 1942, who claimed to have spotted a giant fish more than 10 feet in length while flying over the lake. Even in 1945, survey pilot Larry Rost reports seeing a fish at least 20 feet long swimming in the lake. These sightings typically describe the creature as having a large, broad head, a long, tapered body with colors ranging from aluminum or silver to dark brown. There's numerous tales of local angelers attempting to catch this creature, 
with stories of it snapping stainless steel cables and straining a tuna hook. Some fishermen have also reported unusual movements of large, mysterious creatures beneath their boats. Despite various hypotheses, including it being a giant sturgeon, a sleeper shark, or other large aquatic mammals, the true nature of this creature still remains unknown. The remoteness of the lake and the lack of comprehensive scientific research just adds on to the mystery. In recent years, more sightings have continued to be reported, with fishermen witnessing large, fish-like creatures making massive waves. Hard evidence or clear photo documentation of these sightings is scarce though. Stur's Huyuret The Stur's Huyuret, also known as the Great Lake Monster, is a creature said to reside in Lake Sturzen, Sweden. The crypt has been part of Swedish folklore for centuries, with the earliest recorded mention dating back to 1635. It's described as having a serpentine body, often with a long neck and a dog-like head, and is said to measure between 10 and 42 feet in length. One popular theory suggests that Sturz Huyuret might be a prehistoric animal that has survived the Ice Age. This theory likens it to other famous cryptids such as the Loch Ness Monster and Cham, which are also speculated to be ancient, surviving species. The creature was first described in detail by Vikar Morgens Peterson in 1635, featuring two trolls brewing a mixture that creates a strange animal with a black serpentine body, as it quoted. Other origin stories include a runic spell by the sorcerer Ketel Runesik to imprison the monster and tales of magical trolls conjuring the beast. There have also been numerous sightings of Sturz Huyuret over the years. In 1857, workers at the Forsbaka Bruk, which is an iron mill on the lake, Report seeing a creature with a head black and gleaming, about the size of a large cat's head. Peter Olsen, a naturalist, published a booklet in 1899 documenting 22 eyewitness testimonies with descriptions of the monster varying in size and appearance. Some accounts described it as having several humps on its back, while others mentioned a more snake-like form. In 1986, Stolz Huyuret was declared an endangered species by the Jamlin County Administrative Board, but this protection was revoked in 2005. In August 2008, a film crew claimed to have captured the creature on film, reporting an endothermic mass in the lake. Morag Morag, another creature from Scottish folklore, inhabits Loch Moror in the Scottish Highlands. The tales of Morag date back several decades, with accounts varying in detail. Witnesses describe seeing a large, serpentine-like creature with humps moving through the water. These settings have been pretty sporadic, contributing to Morag's mysterious nature. One of the most notable settings occurred in 1969 when two local men, Duncan McDonnell and William Simpson, encountered what they described as a large, serpentine-like creature while fishing on Loch Morar. They reportedly shot at the creature, though it's unclear if they actually hit it. This incident stands out because of the clarity of the description provided by the witnesses and the reaction it provoked. Morag sightings were previously considered a harbinger of death, particularly the death of prominent members of the local communities. In 1902, the folklorist Alexander Carmichael visited the Lochaber area to collect stories about Morag. He found that Morag was seen as a beautiful mermaid, an enchantress with flowing hair, and her sightings were often associated with the death of local leaders. For instance, the last reported sighting in this form was in 1898, when Agnes MacDonnell, a local leader, died. More recent descriptions make her closely related to Nessie though, with accounts of Morag being about 25 to 30 feet long having structures that look like three humps on the upper part of the body, rough scaly leathery skin, and a head about a foot across. Cryptozoologists have speculated about Morag's identity, suggesting it could be a kelpie or water horse, a shape-shifting water spirit in Scottish folklore, or even a prehistoric dinosaur like a plesiosaur. Waitoriki The Waitoriki is a cryptid report to inhabit areas around the lakes and rivers on the south island of New Zealand. Described as an otter-like creature, it somewhat resembles a cross between an otter and a beaver, about the size of a large cat, weighing around 10 pounds and measuring 1-2 to two feet long from head to tail. It's said to be covered in brown fur, sometimes with white patches and possesses a thick tail resembling that of a beaver. This tail may help in swimming and stabilizing while feeding. Unlike beavers, the white turkey's tail is completely furred. It has short legs, webbed feet, and a face that somewhat resembles a cross between an otter and a cat. It's believed to live in burrows near water and is thought to feed on fish and eels. The origin of the name Waitoriki is unknown and not considered grammatically correct in the Maori language. In 1838, an alleged pelt was found by Julius von Hust, but it lacked toe webbing, essential for aquatic creatures like otters and beavers. Experts consider the pelt inconclusive, possibly belonging to other animals like quolls or possums. Due to New Zealand's water-based environment, theories about its classification vary between it being marsupial or a monotreme but it's more likely categorized as an aquatic mammal. 
Monotremes, like the platypus, lay eggs while marsupials, like kangaroos, nurture embryos in a pouch. The difference in reproduction methods is a key factor in these classifications. However, the actual existence of the white tariki is debated, and it's officially classified as a cryptid. New Zealand, being separate from other land masses for about 80 million years, has no native land mammals except for some bat species. The white tariki, if real, would be really remarkable for this reason. Meshe Kanabek The legend of Meshe Kanabek dates back to the 19th century at Lake Manitou in Rochester, Indiana, and was said to be a giant creature residing in the lake. One of the earliest recorded encounters with Meshe Kanabek was by two fishermen, the Robinsons, who encountered a close and terrifying creature. While fishing on the lake, they noticed a large disturbance in the water. Initially believing it to be a school of fish, they rowed towards it, only to discover that the disturbance was caused by a massive creature, nearly 60 feet in length, moving rapidly on the water's surface towards their boat. In a state of panic, they rowed back to the shore as the creature briefly surfaced before disappearing. The presence of Meshekanabek stirred fear in the community, leading to a posse being formed to capture or kill the creature. However, their efforts were unsuccessful, and the sightings of the creature became less frequent over time. Alright, tier 4, the Cornish Sea Serpent. The Cornish Sea Serpent, known locally as Morgawr, which means sea giant in Cornish, is a creature purported to inhabit the waters near Falmouth Bay, Cornwall, England. Sightings of Morgawr have been reported since at least the early 20th century, with descriptions varying but often depicting a large, serpentine-like creature. One of the earliest reports of a creature resembling Morgawr dates back to 1935, where it's described as having a big head, a goose-like neck, and a huge hump on its back, resembling a big barrel, estimated to be about 40 and 50 feet long. The mouth of the Helford River is reported to be Morgawr's favorite location, with many settings occurring there in an the area now nicknamed Morgawr's Mile. The creature gained significant attention in 1975, when it is described as having a trunk with a very long neck and a skin like a sea lion's. Local fishermen blamed poor fishing and bad weather on settings of the monster. Some versions of the story link the monster's appearance to World War I events, describing it as a crocodile-like creature with webbed feet and a powerful tail. However, the creature's existence is widely debated, with suggestions that it might be a hoax invented by Cornish author Tony Doc Shields, who claimed to have sighted it in 1976 and provided photographs to a local newspaper. Also in 1976, fishermen John Cock and George Vinicom claimed to have sighted the creature, describing it as looking like a prehistoric monster and as large as a 32 feet boat. Their account was later dismissed by a Natural History Museum official, who suggested they had seen a sea turtle instead. Charlie Charlie, also known as Slimy Slim or the Twilight Dragon of Payette Lake, is a cryptid resembling a sea serpent, often compared to the Loch Ness Monster. It is believed to inhabit the deep alpine waters of Payette Lake near Makal, Idaho. The first references to Charlie may stem from Native American beliefs predating Western settlement, describing an evil spirit in the lake. The first documented sighting by Western settlers though occurred in 1920. Workers at the upper end of the lake mistook what they initially thought was a log, which had then began to move suggesting the presence of a large creature. In August 1944, the creature was reportedly seen by several groups, describing it as being 30 to 35 feet in length, with a dinosaur-like head, pronounced jaws, camel-like humps, and the shell-like skin. In September 1946, a group of 20 people reportedly sighted the creature, with Dr. G.A. Taylor of Nampa, Idaho, noting that it appeared to be between 30 and 40 feet long, and seemed to dive into the water like a small motorboat. The serpent was officially named Charlie in 1954 following a contest held by A. Boone McCallum, editor of the Star News. The name was suggested by the Isla Hannaford Turry of Springfield, Virginia, referencing a popular catchphrase from Jack Pearl's old-time radio show. Charlie ended up being reported about a dozen times between 1956 and 1997, which is the last documented sighting. The Lake Chalan Monster The Lake Chalan Monster, a creature in Washington State's Lake Chalan, has been the subject of fascination and fear for over a century. One of the most harrowing encounters occurred in 1892 when a young man bathing in the lake was attacked by a monster. Described as having the legs and body of an alligator, the head and eyes of a snake, a scaly tail, and bat-like wings, this formidable creature clamped its jaws onto the man's legs. Despite attempts by his friends to free him using knives, rocks, and sticks, the beast remained undeterred. In a desperate move, they dragged it over a fire probably get to take flight with the man still in its grasp before plunging back into the lake's depths, taking the young man with it. Additionally, Native American legends add to the monster's mystique. Tribes in the Pacific Northwest speak of a monster serpent in Nahahatak that wreaked havoc in the region, destroying homes and causing famine. 
The creature's fury was such that even attempts by a good spirit to trap and kill it by building a rock barrier in the valley only led to further destruction and the tragic death of a young girl who left paintings of her life and the events on the valley's rock walls. These legends and encounters all contribute to the daring mystery and intrigue surrounding the Lake Chelan monster. Gustav Gustav is a notorious large male Nile crocodile from Burundi, rumored to have killed as many as 200 to 300 people along the banks of the Ruzizi River and the northern shores of Lake Tanganyaka. While the actual number of victims is difficult to verify, Gustav has obtained a near mythical status and is greatly feared by people in the region. He was named by Patrice Faye, a herpetologist who has been studying and investigating him since the late 1990s. Gustav's exact length and weight are unknown, but estimates suggest he could be easily more than 20 feet long and weigh more than 2,000 pounds. Notable characteristics of Gustav include three bullet scars on his body and a deeply wounded right shoulder blade. The circumstances surrounding these scars are unknown though. Scientists and herpetologists who studied Gustav claim that his uncommon size and weight impede his ability to hunt the species as usual prey, forcing him to attack larger animals and to some extent humans. In 2004, a documentary film titled Capturing the Croc Killer aired on PBS documenting an attempt to capture Gustav. The film detailed the efforts of Fai and other scientists who attempted to capture Gustav using a trap cage weighing a ton and measuring nearly 9 meters in length. Despite several kinds of bait being used and the strategic installation of giant snares on certain banks, Gustav evaded capture. The last report sending of Gustav was in 2009, and in 2019 there were unverified claims that Gustav had been killed, but no photographic evidence has been surfaced, leaving these claims dubious. The Honey Island Swamp Monster The Honey Island Swamp Monster is a cryptid often compared to Bigfoot and is a notable figure in Louisiana folklore. Its origins trace back to the early 20th century with the first documented sighting by Harlan Ford in 1963. Ford, a retired air traffic controller, reports seeing a bipedal, hairy creature over 7 feet tall with dingy, grayish hair and yellow eyes. The legend gained momentum when Ford and his friend Billy Mills, the legend gained momentum when Ford and his friend Billy Mills found unusual footprints and a wild boar with a throat gashed, supposedly by the creature. Local lore offers a unique origin for the monster, suggesting it might be the offspring of chimpanzees that escaped from a circus train wreck near the Pearl River in the early 20th century. Some believe these chimps adapted to the swamp environment. Alternatively, Cajun and Native American folklore associates the monster with the Letish, a humanoid raised by alligators. Despite its fearsome description, the creature is mostly portrayed as reclusive, displaying aggression only when threatened. Over the years, numerous settings have been reported by fishermen, hunters, and swamp dealers describing a large, bipedal creature with hair, often near the water's edge or dense vegetation. Theories about its nature range from an undiscovered primate species to a hybrid or mutant creature, while skeptics attribute the sightings to misidentification or hoaxes. The Honey Island Swamp, where the creature is said to inhabit, is a protected area because of its ecological importance. This conservation effort helps preserve the unique biodiversity of the swamp, which may include various wildlife, possibly even the cryptid itself. On to Tier 5, Taniwa. Taniwa are supernatural creatures in Maori tradition, similar to serpents and dragons in other cultures. Their descriptions and roles vary across different tribal traditions and are seen as part of the natural environment in the Maori worldview. Taniwa have diverse forms. Some resemble giant lizards, sometimes with wings, and others are more reptile-like sea creatures or take the shape of sharks, whales, or even logs of wood in rivers. Some Taniwa could change their shape, moving between different forms and could either be male or female. They're known to live in or near water, hiding in layers known as Ruya Tanua, which are often deep pools, caves, or dangerous waterways. In Maori stories, Tanua play various roles. Some are seen as terrifying creatures that capture and eat people or kidnap women. Others act as guardians for tribes and subtribes, and people would offer them gifts and receive charms when passing their dens. Tanua are also symbolic of great chiefs, with some tribes referring to many important chiefs as Tanua. Famous Taniwa include Coop's guardian Taniwa, Tuhirangi who guided and protected canoes in Cook Strait, and Totai Poroporo, a Taniwa that began as a shark and transformed into a creature that started eating people. Another notable Taniwa is Hin Korako, a female Taniwa who married a human and later protected local people. In modern times, Taniwa still hold significance. For example, in 2002, the Negati Naho people in Waikato opposed the plan for a highway that would destroy the lair for the Taniwa, Kuruetahi, leading to the highway being built in a different area. The Espito Cologne The Espito Cologne, a sea creature, is often depicted in medieval bestiaries and literature, 
as a gigantic sea creature, varying in descriptions from a whale to a sea turtle, but consistently characterized by distinctive features like a spiky shell or coral covered back. The creature's name combines the Greek words aspis and kilon, meaning shield turtle. This mythical creature is known for its deceptive appearance, often linking sailors with its tranquil waters that resemble an island. Unwary sailors, mistaking it for land, would anchor their ships to explore, only to find themselves trapped on its back. Once sailors ventured onto it, the pistol cologne would dive into the ocean's depths, dragging them to their demise. It's often associated with a voracious appetite, consuming everything in its path. Symbolically, the pistol cologne has been interpreted as representing the dangers of the sea and the perils of deceptive temptations. It's a cautionary tale against falling into treacherous traps and a reminder of the uncertainties of the ocean. The legend of the Apistol Cologne has been preserved through generations of sailors, becoming a part of maritime folklore and nautical lore. It has inspired various works of art and literature throughout history, from medieval manuscripts and paintings to maritime themed literature. In modern times, it continues to appear in books, movies, and video games, showcasing its enduring impact on popular culture. Sidin Kuroin The Sidin Kuroin, a mythical street creature from Scottish Gaelic folklore, is known for its enormous size and strength. It's reputed to be the largest of all creatures, capable of devouring seven whales, and is recognized by several names in Gaelic tradition, including Great Whirlpool of the Sea, Great Beast of the Ocean, and Monster of the Ocean. The creature's massive size is reflected in popular Caithness rhyme, seven herringers are a salmon's fill, seven salmons are a sea's fill, seven seals are a whale's fill, seven whales are the fill of a Sidon Croin, and seven Sidon Croin are the fill of the big devil himself. According to local folklore, the Sidon Croin could disguise itself as a small silver fish to avoid being detected by fishermen or to attract its next meal. When fishermen caught the seemingly small fish, it would transform back into its monstrous form and devour them. The first mention of the Sidon Croin dates back to the 16th century in the Book of the Dean of Lismore, a collection of poems and stories from Scottish Gaelic culture. This manuscript described the Sidon Croin as a massive sea monster that could swallow seven whales at once and was feared for attacking ships and dragging sailors into the ocean's depths. The physical description of the Sidon Croin varies, with some accounts describing it as a snake-like creature and others as having a grey crest. Its habitat is believed to be the deep waters of the ocean particularly near the western coast of Scotland. The creature is carnivorous too, feeding mainly on whales and other large sea animals. The Inkanyamba The Inkanyamba is a legendary creature from South African mythology, particularly associated with the Zulu and Salsa tribes. This mythical serpent is said to live in a waterfall lake area near Peter Marisberg. The Inkanyamba is often described as a large serpent with an equine head and is believed to be particularly active during the summer months, causing seasonal storms. The legend of the Inkanyamba has its origins in the oral traditions of the Zulu and Dwasa people. According to one version of the legend, Inkanyamba was originally a beautiful maiden with mystical powers over water and weather. However, her arrogance and misuse of these powers led to her transformation by the gods into a fearsome serpent. This tale serves as a cautionary story about the consequences of tampering with the natural order. Physically, the Inkanyamba is believed to be over 20 feet long and resembles a snake or eel except for its equine head which can be that of a horse or a zebra. It's also said to have a horse-like mane on its head and a fin-like mane across its back. The creature is associated with significant supernatural abilities, including the power to attract massive tornadoes during the summer months as it takes flight in search of its mate. It's also linked to the unexplained disappearances of domestic animals. There have been several modern sightings of the Inkanyamba. For instance, a game ranger reportedly saw the creature in 1962 and a caretaker claimed to have seen it twice in 1974 and 1991. In 1995, Bob Teeny, a restaurant owner, also reported seeing the animal at Hawaii Falls. While some scientists suggest that the Inkanyamba might be a large species of freshwater eel, locals maintain that it is much larger and possesses supernatural powers. The Beast of Busco The Beast of Busco, also known as Oscar, is a creature from Indiana folklore, specifically from the area around Churro Busco, Indiana. This mysterious creature is said to be an enormous snapping turtle, with the ports of it dating back to the late 19th and mid 20th century. The story of the Beast of Busco begins in 1898, when a farmer named Oscar Folk claimed to have seen a giant turtle living in the 7 acre lake on his farm, near Churro Busco. Although he shared his sightings with others, it was largely dismissed and the matter was dropped. However, the legend resurfaced 50 years later. In July 1948, two Churro Busco citizens, Laura Blue and Charlie Wilson, 
reporting a huge turtle estimated to weigh around 500 pounds while fishing on Falk Lake. Gail Harris, who then owned the property, along with other witnesses, also claimed to have seen the creature. These sightings sparked national interest and the story was widely circulated by the media. The town of Churubusco became the center of attention as thousands flocked to catch a glimpse of the legendary turtle. Attempts to capture the beast of Busco were made, including efforts to drain the lake and using a female turtle as bait, but all were unsuccessful. The last significant sighting occurred when the lake was nearly drained and the turtle allegedly appeared, consuming a full-grown duck in a single bite. Despite the lack of concrete evidence and the failure of various attempts to capture it, the beast of Busco became a staple of local folklore and has had a lasting impact on the community of Churubusco. The town celebrates the Churubusco Turtle Days Festival every year, featuring turtle races, parades, and other events in commemoration of the Beast of Busco. On to the last year now, Orang Ikan. The Orang Ikan, which translates from Indonesian to fishman, is a cryptid associated with the folklore of the Kai Islands in the province of Maluku, Indonesia. These islands are known for their white sandy beaches and clear waters, adding a pretty cool backdrop to the mysterious tales. Legend of the Orang Ikan gained attention during World War II. In 1943, Japanese soldiers stationed in the area began reporting sightings of strange creatures in the coastal waters. These beings were depicted as resembling humans in their facial features and hands, but with distinct differences. They were said to be about 1.5 meters with tall, pink skin, spikes on their heads, and a wide mouth similar to that of a carp. Unlike classical mermaids, the Orang Ikan reportedly had ordinary human legs instead of fish tails. These creatures were observed swimming in shallow waters near the beaches, and there were instances where they came onto land. One notable account involved Sergeant Taro Huribo, who was called to the village where dead Orang Ikan was allegedly found. Horibo described the creature as having long dark hair with a reddish tinge, a neck covered with spines, a monkey-like face, and wide fish mouth filled with sharp teeth, and membranes between the fingers and toes. The body was said to be dotted with strange growths resembling algae. The accounts of the Orang Ikan by the Japanese soldiers were not taken seriously though by scientists, mainly because of the lack of photographic evidence. Despite this skepticism, sightings in and around the Kai Lagoons reportedly continue to this day. Kalupalik The Kalupalik is a creature from Inuit mythology, particularly associated with the icy arctic waters of northern Alaska and Canada. In Inuit folklore, the Kalupalik is described as a child snatching sea hag or aquatic humanoid. It's described as having scaly, bumpy skin, fins protruding from its neck, back, and torso, webbed clawed hands, and a foul surfer like smell. Unlike many mythical mermaids, the Kalupalik is not portrayed as attractive, but rather as a fearsome predator. Inuit parents traditionally warn their children about the Kalupalik, especially if they wander too close to the shore or ice. The Kalupalik was said to emit a distant, eerie humming sound to attract curious children. If a child approached a weak part of the ice, the creature would snatch them and drag them into freezing waters. The stories varied regarding what the Kalupak actually did to the captured children. Some tales claimed it devoured them, while others suggested the creature raised the children as its own in an underwater lair, feeding on their youth and innocence to remain immortal. The legend of the Kalupak might have originated as a cautionary tale to keep Inuit children from wandering too close to dangerous Arctic environments. It served as a tool in parenting to instill fear of the hazardous icy waters and to keep children safe. The Kalupalik has also been featured in various forms of media, including children's books like A Promise is a Promise by Robert Munch and Michael Kuraskak. These contemporary representations continue to keep the legends alive, both within and outside Inuit communities. Vodionoi The Vodionoi, a crypt from Slavic mythology, is known for its association with water and mysterious origins. This creature is derived from the Slavic word voda, meaning water, and is often depicted as a malevolent spirit. The Vodianoi enjoys drowning humans, especially those who disregard specific customs such as swimming after sunset or on holy days. In folklore, it's typically shown as an old man with a green beard and webbed fingers, living in bodies of water like rivers and lakes. This water spirit's depiction varies across Slavic cultures. In Czech and Slavic folklore, it's known as Vodnik, while in German tales, it's referred to as Wasserman or Nix. Often represented as a shapeshifter, the Vodianoi can transform into different forms, including snakes or fish. It's also credited with the ability to control the weather, often being blamed for storms and floods. The Vodianoi's carton part, Vodianesta, described as a beautiful water maiden with flowing green hair, is sometimes considered its wife. She can manifest in various forms, such as a golden fish or a white swan. 
While generally harmless, she can be mischievous, sabotaging fishing nets and water mill wheels. Rituals and offerings, including bread, tobacco, and even animals, are often made to appease these spirits and avoid their wrath. Yakumama The Yakumama, meaning Mother of Water, is a legendary giant serpent believed to inhabit the Amazon River and its nearby lagoons. This enormous creature, up to 60 meters in length, is regarded as the protective spirit of these waters. Indigenous people often describe the Yakumama as a formidable entity responsible for devouring prey and manifesting its presence through giant splashes of water. Fishermen's disappearances in the region have been attributed to this creature, intensifying its fearsome reputation. Yakumama's physical description is pretty astonishing. It's depicted as a thick, muscular serpent with a body length up to 60 meters, covered in dark green or brown scales. The head of Yakumama is said to be as large as a small bull, featuring glowing red eyes and razor sharp teeth. While there's no scientific evidence of Yakumama's existence, it's speculated that its legend might be based on sightings of large snakes like the green anaconda, which is known to reach significant sizes but not nearly as large as the Yakumama. The serpent is deeply woven into the cultural fabric of the Amazonian people, symbolizing the balance between man and nature. It's often featured in their art, music, and dance, highlighting its significance in Amazonian heritage. Yakumama is not just a cryptid, but a symbol, reminding the importance of preserving the natural world. In folklore, Yakumama is known for its powerful abilities, including captivating its prey with its gaze and controlling weather elements like rain and storms. Offering of foods and alcohol are made to appease Yakumama, especially by local fishermen and inhabitants of the Amazon basin. The legend of Yakumama also includes tales of its interactions with humans, often with dramatic consequences. For example, a man traveling down the Napo River with his family encountered Yakumama during a storm. Despite his prayers and offerings, Yakumama consumed his cargo and livestock, leaving the man to return to his village with nothing but his life. So that ends the video, let me know if you guys like this more longer video and please drop some feedback in the comments on things you think I can improve on. Anyways, thank you for watching and have a nice day, bye.